Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Planet Zoo video. My name is Leaf, and as always, it's a pleasure to have all of you guys here again. Once again, you know, always, you know? So we're back in Foxboro Zoo, and this time we're doing a little bit of a speed build. I know, we're doing something a little bit different for Foxboro. I, this really wasn't a speed build series to begin with, but you know, I had a lot of fun with this one, and I feel like this is a nice little format that we can get used to going forward. And, you know, it helps me kind of stay grounded, it helps me, like, you know, really focus on the exhibits that I'm making, like, first and foremost. And I really did like this one that I did here. So, this is a capybara exhibit, and I use both Narwhalers and Jen's capybaras, and they both look stellar in here. Oh my god. Now, just a little bit of, like, an idea of what I'm going for. I'm going for a nice little tiny capybara exhibit. Not really doing anything too special. These guys are absolutely adorable. And I wanted them to be like kind of the face of South America. So we're officially starting like the South America trek through here. And you know, it kind of fits perfectly because we have the uh, Kinkajou right next to it. And you know, it's awesome, you know, it's great. So a few things I want to talk about here. So I do include this little bit of a behind the stage kind of like capybara feeding part and you can see me doing like the little pool right here a little bit but um no so recently i was able to go to zoo tampa and it was absolutely amazing and i got to feed uh the indian rhinos there i forget the female's name but she has a little baby called gronk which is absolutely adorable because you know the rhino has just as big of a head as gronk and it's you know but whatever. <laughs> All right, so here I am just working on like a little bit of backstage pathing, just making sure that you can actually work your way up to, you know, where the capybaras will actually meet you for the feeding. But yeah, I got to feed the rhinos and they're really nice. These, these rhinos, man, they have like these lips, right? But they're like prehensile, so you can actually see them, like use them like a finger and start to like grab the leaf as you're holding it up there. It was actually collard greens, but still same thing. But no, I was like, you know what? I wanna have more of these experiences in Foxboro Zoo, you know? I figure like, you know, it's a good way to make money for the zoo. It's a good way for guests to get educated about the animals because when we were there, we basically had our ears talked off about like rhino facts and all stuff like that. When we eventually do get rhinos in here, I'll definitely relay all those fun facts to all you guys. So please don't even worry about me not selling you anything. But yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I'll probably roll some pictures like across the screen right here of me. Also, leaf face reveal. Oh my god. But yeah, I really wanted to integrate that right here. So let's talk about the little habitat that we're building. So I really wanted to keep it nice and small. I wanted to keep it still within the realistic zoo setting. And you can see me put both the capybaras in there right now. And here I am just doing a little bit of the woodwork for the little fence. I definitely do need a touch of this up again because they can theoretically escape, but their hitboxes won't allow them to, which actually works out in the end. So that's kind of awesome. But yeah, here I am just fiddling with it. I didn't really know what I was doing at first, but I eventually figure it out. So I just have this little nice little shaded area. I put like a parasol in there too, just to keep it like nice and shaded. I'd figure like you go in here with a group of like five or six and then you guys would be able to like talk with the keeper and everything. I feel like that would have been really nice. So that's the whole idea that I was going for right there. And I actually do turn that little green thing into a building. I figure like in the colder months they could be stored in there or you know, later down the line, we might have like a tropical dome. And that's something that I really want to do because we have so many South American mods coming out and I'm like, damn it, like we, we need to get all of them in here. So that's going to be really fun to do. Like I'm, I'm actually beyond excited for that. And we actually do go into like the live portion of this later on. We're about halfway through like the speed build right now. You can actually see me start to like dress up the area a little bit more. I'm just trying to like fiddle with some different ideas on how to fill up this space, how to make it look very natural. And I think in the end, it actually turns out a lot better than I actually tried. Uh, yeah, so that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> but no, I really do love how this starting area is starting to come out. And you have that little overlook over there that looks into like the whole farm area. Sponsored by Garlic Farms, by the way. Nice little local local dairy farm in for uh, all of us Rhode Islanders. But yeah, so here I am just working on the sign. Um, 
don't worry about the height, it's, it'll, I'll fix it up in just a little bit. So I do capybara encounters right there. I should probably change out the path so only keepers can go back there. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see about that because right now guests can go back there and you really shouldn't be able to go back there if you're like at a normal zoo. By the way, the Bengal bamboo is way too tall. I, I'm complaining today. It's a complaining video. All my videos are complaining videos. Here I am just checking out like all the scale of them. Here I am making the building. Um, I also love this like nice subtle green. It's kind of like a go away green kind of. But um, no, I just really love how that turns out. And I feel like, you know, the green is perfect for like tropical America too. So that actually works out really well. Yeah, I've been getting into really using like those light switches and the exterior outlets so much. I should probably go back in there and do a little bit more realism detailing. I should probably do like some hoses and stuff. But yeah, in the end, I think it comes out really well and we can definitely check it out in like the live portion. Check out these little capybars in action. They actually jump through their habitat pretty much because a lot of their navigation area is kind of borked. So unfortunately they do need to like make these extremely high jumps which is so funny to see but still nonetheless they're amazing to have in this little zoo. And for the building itself I kind of just do like a little basic trim on it. It's it's nothing too special. It's just a little staff building and you really don't even see it from the habitat. But I should probably actually cover it up a little bit more maybe with some vines and stuff but Nonetheless, you can see just how much these guys really love their exhibit. They're nice and tiny. I have this little door for them as well. So the keepers actually have their own door and the capybars have their own little door that would probably go into like a little bit of a indoor holding area for them. I should probably research what capybara holding, holding enclosures actually look like. I think Crocs actually did a uh, lovely recreation of a capybara habitat, so if you haven't seen that, go check out Crocs. He's finally making his debut on YouTube, he's such an amazing builder. But um, no, here I am just doing a little bit of theming, doing a little bit of like decoration too. Uh, I love using this grass over here. It's not even grass, it's like the uh, candelabra tree. But using it for grass is perfect. Oh my god, I love using it. And I really love how this area turned out too. I was like, you know what? I just want to have like this dense foliage right behind here. It just really brings you into the jungle or something. And it comes out so well. Like this is why I wish we had more bamboo. We only have the Bengal and the fountain bamboo. We need more different varieties because I don't know, I'm getting kind of tired of using the same ones, but still they do a really great job over there. And I still use some of ZZ's foliage back there. I use a few of the crowberry bushes right in there just to kind of line up the um, separation between the habitats a little bit more. I talk about like that little section in the middle there too. But yeah, we are ending the speed build pretty soon. How much longer do we have actually? Let me zoom right in. Yeah, we have a little bit. I'll probably like sign off in just a little bit, but you can see we start to dress up the habitat a little bit more. Yeah, I really love this build so much. I actually do add some of these little things. I do need to find them. Um, I need to find some nice little billboards for these guys. I just like I I'm I don't really I'm not good at making them myself, <laughs> I'll admit. But um I know a lot of different people out there make some really good ones like ZZ, like Narwhaler. Um but yeah, that is pretty much it. Here I add a little table for like the food that you would give the capybaras. And yeah, I give them a little bit of oranges. So I'll see you guys in the live portion of this, all right? Don't leave. Please don't leave. I'll miss you guys. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the speed build. Who knows what I'm going to be talking about in there. But yeah, this is our little capybara habitat, and I'm, I'm just going to probably, like, grow... I don't know. But, <laughs> no, I probably won't even include the cinematics because we're going to walk through it, you know? So, here we go. We're just going to go, like, to the entrance of it. So, I figure we're going to start off with South America going to the left at, like, this little split junction. Because I do believe the... What is this? The honey bear? Otherwise known as a kinkajou? Uh, let's find out where they're from because I do actually believe they're from South America. So, that actually works out really well. Yeah, they are perfect. All right. So yeah, the honey bear comes from South America, which is perfect because it leads us right into 
our little capybara habitat, and I absolutely love these guys. So I decided to give them like a little bit. We're gonna pause it because the camels are way too loud. But um, yeah, I decided to give them a little bit of a split habitat. Forgive me while I like adjust my chair for a little bit. And I did include like a little bit of water for them and I kind of made it a little bit dingy and you can see we're starting to get like some of that texture glitching again, which, you know, it sucks, but what can you do? I don't get why this one isn't, but that one is, but you know, it's whatever. See, I guess can see our little capybara friends swimming around and we can actually see one right in there. So unfortunately they do kind of swim below the water, which, you know, it doesn't really happen. But, you know, we can just pretend that they have deep diving. You know, we figured out deep diving, guys, you know? So, if we continue over here, we can see a little bit of our friends over here. And I absolutely love how well this habitat came out. I decided to go for a little bit more of, like, a... I don't know. Zoo. Like, a more realistic zoo, I guess. So, it is a little bit small. And, you know, that's... It happens, you know? Sometimes animals don't have all the space that they need, and this is something that I'm really much a fan of over here. This is our little capybara encounters, and um, I'll probably talk about like my rhino encounter in like the speed build, so you guys will pretty much hear everything I'm saying already. But yeah, they have these little oranges that you can feed the capybaras for like, you know, you pay so-and-so amount of money. Over here is a little bit of a staff area, yada yada, it's fine. But yeah, these guys seem to really enjoy their little habitat, and I'm really happy how well this came out. But yeah, you can see we have both the um, normal capybaras in here, made by Jen, and we also have narwhalers in here somewhere. It's the one that's sinking itself over here. So yeah, we have the lessers over here, and the normal capybaras over there, and I love how well this habitat came out. And I even like this little thing over here too. Granted, it's implied, but keepers can just like look into their habitat, observe how they are, and you know, just, yeah. I really love how that comes out. So probably going forward, this whole area right here is going to be South America. Not really sure what I'm going to do in there. Uh, I do want to keep like a little bit of a park over here, so probably like do a little bit of a dog park over there, which might actually be a pretty good excuse to use the dog mod. But yeah, the parking lot still isn't really done, which is a little unfortunate because, you know, I really do want to get that done, but I don't really know how to do good parking lots, but whatever. I also did this little area right over here. I really love how this came out. It's nice and secluded, and it's just like a nice little break area. So let's just say you're like heading towards like the end of the zoo. Let's just say you do the loop kind of like this. Like if you end up back here, that's a perfect place to just chill out before you leave the zoo. Let's just say you don't want to leave just yet, say it's rush hour or something, and you just want to chill out and watch the copy bars, you know? It's it's a nice little place to sit. And I probably will dress this up, I just don't know what to do with it, and I don't want to, like, fake something and, you know, not want to delete it later because I don't really delete things. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out, like, what else there is to show off. I have done a little bit of work over here on like the little train ride. We're going to pause it just because it's a little too loud. But yeah, you basically now go through the elk habitat. Now this really wouldn't be too realistic because I wouldn't recommend going through like an elk and a moose habitat on a train just because they are relatively aggressive creatures. But yeah, here's the start of the moose habitat and you know. We have one bull moose, he likes to chill out by himself. I, I still love how well these guys turned out, they're beautiful creatures. But yeah, he has all this nice big room in here, and I will dress it up further down the line. It's not really speed build material, so... Oh, he is. Well, we just saw him break out, so that's cool. But yeah, we will be included um, some more deer. I did put white tail here as like a little temporary thing but I don't know we might change it out for like Sika deer or something like that and down here obviously we're gonna have like our little black bear overlook and this will kind of lead us into North America so we already have like the farm which ends up with like North America up there we have river otters we have like all these beautiful artiodactyls I guess deer are artiodactyls I'm pretty sure they are at least and we can sort of lead it into here. Maybe might even do like a desert house for Mexico. We don't really know. 
and I am kind of a fan of like splitting up North America and South America because usually you have like them lead into each other but no I'm really happy that they are their own separate entities because I don't know it just has it I don't know it has a little quirk to it but yeah we can see the Soul Keeper over here so yeah I'm pretty much stalling the end of the video at this rate so I want to thank you guys so much and I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video for Foxborough Zoo. Take care and have the most wonderful, wonderful day.